Hey everybody, it's Jeff. Uh, I'm coming to you from the room that I affectionately call the parlor here at uh, my home, otherwise known as my garage, but I've got it decked out in some, uh, some club chairs and a rug. Uh, I'm going to be smoking a cigar tonight in, in the parlor. I think most of you all know I'm, I'm primarily a, a pipe guy. Uh, pipe tobacco is my, is my uh, indulgence of choice, but tonight I'm going to be smoking a cigar. And I had a, uh, a friend uh, who I know was smoking some uh, cigars tonight, and it was one of his first times. He sent me a couple pictures, and uh, I wanted to... Uh, hey, what's up, guys? we got Snoy, we got Jeremy. What's up, Kevin? Um, and so uh, I wanted to give him some tips and so just some some thoughts on uh, on how to get the most out of your cigar experience. Um, so tonight I've got a Romeo and Julieta uh, 1875 Nicaragua. This is a Toro, so uh, there's all kinds of different sizes of cigars out there. Uh, a Toro is six inches, so six inches long. And it's uh, 50 64ths of an inch. So if you're looking at cigar sizes, that's how you can tell. Obviously, the six inches are a little easier to discern. But then you got the, the other number, and that, that refers to the diameter. And that's measured in 64ths of an inch. So the real common sizes are, ironically, uh, Corona. Uh, Corona is a real common size of cigar. You got Toro, uh, Robusto. And then uh, my personal favorite, because I'm, I'm, this is my current book that I'm reading during quarantine, but uh, the Churchill is one of my favorite uh, cigar sizes. So this is what, I, what I'm smoking tonight. Uh, so we'll start with how to cut. You know, a lot of times you don't know, even know how to cut. Uh, but you can see at the top of the cigar, it's got like a cap, right? So it's not focusing well, but at the top, there's like a cap. So we want to try to cut off like the smallest amount you can. And we got all kinds of different cutters, man. We got, uh, this is a real simple guy, you know, the one way, it gets a little fancier. You've got the two blades that move. So I'm gonna use that. And I'm just gonna try to, uh, I, I got some questions out there. Uh, Mike, that's funny. <laughs> uh, don't ask me, I think. We'll, we'll get to that later, but, um, so yeah, you're looking at the cap here. You just want to cut off just just enough to get a, a real clean draw. So I'm going to take this, and you can see I'm not going to take much off. I'm going to try to take off the smallest amount possible. So do that over here, and you can see I snipped. I got a pretty clean cut. Now you don't want to cut off too much because if you do, the cigar will become uh, unwrapped. As you start smoking it, it'll it'll like unroll. And I've had that happen to me. Uh, one of my first cigars I smoked like, you know, 15 or 20 years ago, it uh, it started to unwrap on me and it's a huge pain in the butt. It's not a lot of fun. So, all right, so we've got the cigar cut. All right, so the next step, uh, now you can do this with anything. You don't have to use, uh, uh, I've got this lighter. This is not even an expensive lighter. There's like a promo lighter, but it is butane. Um, so you can see it's got the kind of jet flame on it. Uh, but you can use a match. You can use a soft flame lighter. You can use a Bic. It doesn't matter. It's just is about speed. So what I'm going to do is take the cigar and I'm going to, I'm basically going to just lightly uh, toast to the end. And that kind of helps get it going. It helps give us an even uh, burn and an even uh, an even smoke. So you can see, I don't know if y'all can see that or not, but I'm just going to rotate the cigar while I'm torching it. And I'm going to try to just kind of char the end. And that really helps create an even burn on the cigar and really kind of help get it going. This is an important step. It's easy to, to not know this. If you're a new guy and you've never smoked a cigar and no one's shown you how to do this, you have no idea, and that, that was me for a long time. So, you know, through YouTube and through uh, some some buddies of mine at the old Virginia Tobacco Shop uh, close by, uh, I've learned some of these tricks. So you can see it's it's not lit, but it's charred. It's kind of you can see it's smoking already. What's up, everybody? Uh, so you can see we got it going. It's uh, 
it's ready to be lit for real now. So now I'm going to take my soft flame lighter, and this is where I'm going to show this guy off a little bit. This is my, again, ironically, it's called an IM Corona uh, Fat Boy Lighter, and this was made uh, in Japan. Um, or excuse me, it's called an Old Boy. Uh, excuse the little Freudian slip there, but the, it's called an Old Boy Lighter, and it's made in Japan. Uh, and this is a soft flame lighter. Um, so you can see this is my this is my pipe lighter. This is primarily my um, the lighter that I use to light my tobacco pipes because it's real soft flame. Um, it's not going to scorch the rims of my pipes or anything like that. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the cigar and I'm going to light the end of it while kind of gently uh, puffing on the cigar, and I'm going to rotate it again. We're going to try to get this bad boy lit. So here we go. So the goal is to get a real nice even cherry, and I'm actually using the uh, I'm actually using the the camera on my phone to kind of get a good look. But so you can see there when I draw on it, you're getting a nice even. I call it a cherry. A lot of guys call it that. You get a nice even uh, draw going on. Uh, Eric, I see. What's your take on matches? Man, I use matches all the time. You can definitely use matches. Uh, I, I keep matches handy all the time, but you can definitely use those. I just, I have this fancy lighter that's super awesome that I uh, I paid more than I'd care to admit for, uh, but it's super awesome, so I, I use that because I have it, but you can definitely use matches. So, now that uh, now that we've got the cigar lit, the next step is just to enjoy it. And so, you just you take gentle puffs. Now, I'm not here to tell you one way or the other. There's no right or wrong. I just know for me some of the uh, mistakes that I made or things that I did that maybe kind of hampered or slowed my enjoyment of a good cigar. Um, and one, the first one would be drawing too frequently. So if I, if I draw on the cigar, uh, too much and too fast, you're going to get a, uh, you're going to get a visit from, uh, cousin Nick in a hurry. Excuse me. Uh, keep some water handy. Uh, that pollen, man, it's not even the cigar. So if you draw too fast on this thing, it's going to give you like a nicotine headache. And I don't know if you, how many guys out there have ever, uh, you know, smoked a cigar and felt like, man, all of a sudden I'm, you get the like cold sweats going on. You start to not feel real good. That's just, uh, that's like a rush of nicotine hitting your, your system. And it, it can make you sick actually. So you can see. I just drew on the cigar, but I'm able to basically talk for quite a while in between puffs. I try to go uh, maybe 60 seconds, maybe a minute to two minutes. Uh, and that way, you can really kind of enjoy the aroma of the cigar. Uh, you know, the, in pipe smoking, you call that the room note. You know, the room note of the cigar, which is a, a huge part of the enjoyment. You can really enjoy the flavor of the cigar. There's no rush. It's uh, it's really meant to be uh, a very patient experience. You know, you don't even have to hold it. I've got a, uh, I've got one of these kind of fancy. Well, I've got one of these guys here. Let's see, is it? Can you see that? So it's a, uh, an ashtray, and I can kind of set my cigar there, and just let it sit if I want. Um, so all those little, I, and I've learned this stuff through, through trial and error. So some of you guys know that have joined me in the parlor here for uh, an occasional drink or smoke. When I first was starting into the hobby of 
pipe smoking or cigars. I mean, I made all kind of rookie mistakes. I was using, I would smoke and then I would empty my ashes into like a Cascade dishwasher, like a plastic bin from a Cascade dishwasher, you know, the little pods. And I thought, man, it's, the, their ashes are out. Like, it's not a big deal. I'll just dump it in there. And I came out uh, the next day. And I basically burned a hole through my workbench over here. Uh, not good. And I was like, holy smokes, I made a huge rookie mistake. So like the next day I went out and got one of these fancy, uh, I think it's actually called like stinky cigar <laughs> ashtrays. But that way I've got a safe place to, to ash my cigars or my pipes and the cigar rest definitely come in handy. So as I'm smoking the cigar as well, I will, I will just sort of, uh, you know, slowly rotate it as I draw on it. And the goal is, you can see, I'm trying to get it to burn evenly. And that's, that's okay. Yeah, I'm doing a pretty decent job. You, what you want to avoid is getting like one side. Like if you just hold it one way, it actually draws air more through the bottom. So you'll you'll like you'll smoke like up this one side of the cigar and then the top won't be lit at all and then the cigar will fall apart so obviously we want to avoid that too so just gentle puffs enjoy it enjoy the flavor enjoy the aroma This is nice. This is my first time smoking one of these. I bought a, uh, a Romeo and Juliet uh, sampler pack. Well, I think it was on pipesandcigars.com. Um, and uh, they had like eight of their like premium cigars for like 40 bucks, which uh, maybe not cheap, but for five bucks a stick for a, a, for a nice uh, cigar like a Romeo and Juliet, pretty good deal so if you're looking for something to try for 40 bucks you really can't go wrong it comes in some pretty cool packaging I'll keep them upstairs I just have like a little desktop humidor nothing crazy I've got maybe uh, two dozen cigars in there or something I smoke a cigar every couple weeks maybe So yeah, we got some some folks joining us. Thanks for uh, thanks for checking in. It's good to see everybody. Uh, I figured I'd uh, kind of let you in on what one of my nightly routines is. Obviously, um, you know I try to not smoke a cigar every night, but it's it's one of life's uh, you know kind of simple pleasures. Life's too short to uh, to not do what you enjoy, I guess. So. Um, I've been kind of getting into the art of smoking cigars and, and certainly smoking pipes. Uh, the pipe thing has really become a, a real fun hobby for me. So, uh, Jen and Landon, hey, what's up? So, Landon, my, my buddy Landon's actually the one that got me started in the pipe smoking hobby. So, shout out to Landon uh, for his guidance and uh, giving me the tools that I needed to get started. Uh, I got some, yeah, John Sarah, what's up, buddy? Long time no see. Um, commenting on the smoking jacket. So, yeah, so, yeah, I am wearing a smoking jacket. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. Um, it's satin. And this is not like a super high-end smoking jacket, but it's, uh, it's not an El Cheapo either. You know, it's, um, it's like a mid-grade. I got it for Christmas, actually. And, uh, yeah, my wife Susie got it for me because she's awesome. Um, and this just kind of, it helps kind of keep the stink off of you. You know, you can, uh, you can enjoy, uh, you can indulge in a cigar or a pipe out in, out in the parlor, as I call it, and uh, not have to worry about bringing that stink back into the house with you. And plus, it's really cool, you know. I mean, uh, it's a lot of fun. You sort of... Uh, can't help but feel cool wearing a smoking jacket you know uh, it's one of those things and uh, I think everybody sort of deep down wants to wear something like this and I, I think often of my high school band director Wayne 
who I see on here, and uh, Wayne is a shout out. Uh, he always wore these hats, right? So his thing when he was in, when I was uh, in school was he always wore these really cool like brimmed hats. And um, he had a really unique look. It was like part of his character. And uh, uh, it's one of those things you sort of have to just own it. And if you do, then it's awesome. You can pull it off. If you're timid about it or if you're shy, then you kind of go like, man, this is, uh, I don't know, like I feel like a dork in this hat or whatever. But if you own it, it can become part of your look. And so that's kind of how I feel about the smoking jacket. I really enjoy it. It's actually functional for me. It's fun to wear. So um, I see uh, Brian asking, is that where I got my hat? So Brian knows I've been wearing a, uh, I have a leather hat. And uh, I've had it about two and a half years now. Um, I got a, it's a handmade leather hat. I actually got it at Dollywood the theme park Dollywood. So a couple years ago, a colleague of mine, we took a, him and I took like a guy trip and we drove to uh, Dot Pigeon Forge and we went to Dollywood to ride a uh, lightning rod. It's what they're, they're like hot new coaster. I'm kind of a coaster nerd. So took a little road trip, went to uh, Mike, what's up buddy? Good to see you, my friend. Long time no see. Uh, but I went to Dollywood, and I got this hat. I don't have the hat here, or else I'd put it on. But it's a it's a leather hat. It's very like Indiana Jones looking, but it's leather. Indy's hat was felt. is a fedora. Um, but it, it was handmade, and I just bought it. I said I want this hat. It like they've got all these. If you go to Dollywood, they've got this whole area called like Craftsman's Row, right? And uh, Craftsman's Row has all these artisans where you can get like handmade products, whether it's leather, they've got like a blacksmith, guys making like handmade like wind chimes, and uh, they have a hat, a guy that makes hats, like handmade leather hats. So I got this hat, and I wore it, you know, I wore it once in a while. And uh, over time, I, uh, I found myself wanting to wear the hat more than uh, I was, so... Oh, clutch. So here's here's the hat. Thank you, Susie. So I have my hat. So here it is. Uh, it's, it's real leather. I oil it. Now, it doesn't necessarily fit my smoking jacket look currently, but I figured for demonstration I'd, I'd show you guys. Uh, but I wanted to wear the hat more. And I sort of thought to myself, like, you know, if uh, if you just wear it, and you wear it confidently, you can pull it off. And it becomes part of your look. It becomes part of your character. And uh, one of the first days I wore this hat into work, uh, a lot of people were like, da 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 you know, singing the Indiana Jones theme, which is, hey, that's fine with me. Uh, Indy's pretty cool. But uh, over time, I just started wearing it every day, and then I had some people come up and say, man, I wish I could pull off a hat like that. And it's like, you can. You can pull off a look like this, but you just have got to own it. And I really think back to, again, to Wayne. I mean, he always wore his hat, and he always looked super cool and a little bit intimidating. Wayne, I'm still a little bit intimidated of you. <laughs> but he always wore his hat, and it was part of his look, and he wore it confidently. So anyway, that's my, my story of my hat. So you can see my ash here is starting to get a little bit long. Uh, I'm trying to puff patiently. Now, I don't want this to fall off onto my carpet. I've got like a rug out here. It's not super high end, but it's nice for, for my garage, right? So my parlor. A rookie mistake, uh, and trust me, I, 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 I learned through experience here, but uh, uh, is to tap the ash, right? Everybody thinks you should tap the ash like a cigarette. Psh, psh, psh. Tap, and then the ash falls off. Problem is, if you do that, what can happen is it'll fall off unevenly. Um, and then the cigar will smoke, uh, the scar will smoke unevenly, 
which is we don't want that. We want it to, again. We want it to burn kind of like a plane this way as much as we can. So the better way to do it instead of tapping. What's up, Kevin? Got Dan Booth. Hey, good to see you, Landon. Cult. Oh, he's smoking some of the uh, Cult Profile. Man, that's one I've been wanting to try. I think that's the Cherry Aromatic Pipe Tobacco. I haven't got my hands on a uh, a tin of that yet, but I'm going to soon. Let me know how it is. So, it's about time here. So I'm gonna. Normally, I would just do this at my table, but instead of tapping, I'm just gonna just gently. Just roll the ash. Oh, there you see. See, it fell right off. So I literally just, I took the ash and I just kind of gently rolled it up against the side of the ashtray. And you can see it's still not, it's pretty even, not perfectly uneven, but if I keep rotating the cigar, it's going to burn smooth. But if you tap it, you get like a cone and then it, it, can, it can start smoking kind of funny on you. So... You can see there now I've got a nice the cherry like if I smoke. See how the cherry was really even and the cigar is lit all around. That's what we want. You'll notice too I left I left the wrapper on the cigar. Um, that's one it's, there's no right or wrong. Um, but I've you know based on the, the research I've done, some of the real cigar aficionados and the guys that actually make the cigars tell you to leave the wrapper on because the wrapper helps to keep uh, the tobacco held together. If you take it off sometimes you'll start to get that unraveling effect and uh, or you can pull the leaf, the wrapper leaf, off of the cigar as well um, because it's held, they use like a fruit, like a sugar, uh, sugar from fruit and they, and they just sort of gently glue the wrapper on and so if you, before you've lit up, and if the cigar's at room temperature, if you go to pull the wrapper off, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes you can accidentally pull the wrapper off, the, the outside leaf that sort of holds everything together. And uh, you don't want that. So I generally leave the wrapper on, plus it kind of gives me a good gauge of where I'm at, <laughs> you know, how much I've smoked, how much I've got left. And when it starts to get down close and it starts to be like a nose warmer for me, I'll take the wrapper off. So again, I'm just trying, you know, just trying to enjoy it and be patient. Sometimes I'll, uh, I'll light up a cigar and I'll go and do something like uh, I'll wash my car. So because I'm out in my parlor or my garage... Uh, I'll I'll go right over on my driveway and I'll I'll start to uh, wash my car and that sort of forces me to be patient with how I choose to smoke this thing because then I, my hands are wet right I can't pick up the cigar if my hands are wet so it keeps me active um, but you can't you can you can do that um, and you don't have to worry about it going out so let's just say I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this here and I'm gonna see kind of how long I can go without drawing on it. A little trick you can do if you find yourself smoking a cigar and it's starting to go out, uh, you know, you just gently puff back through the cigar. Uh, that's a little trick that I picked up uh, through my through my pipe smoking, but that will give just enough oxygen to the leaf in the tobacco to help it burn and keep that uh, keep that ember lit. Man, we got Andrew. What's up, Andrew? John Bird. Man, long time no see. Chaz, good to see you, buddy. Mr. Ike, hey, been thinking about you lately, Mr. Ike. Hope you're doing well. Scott, Stacy, hey, good to see you. If I missed you, hey, it's good to see everybody. Joey, good to see you. My mom's watching. My mom's probably pissed. She loves to just bust my butt about, you know, smoking a cigar. But that's what moms do, so... So I said I wasn't going to draw, and I forgot. So the little trick is you just gently, you can just, you can't see it, but I, if I just gently 
exhale, you can see the smoke. So I'm not exhaling, but now if I just, just a little bit when it's starting to kind of die, if you can, you can kind of get a sense for it starting to die out. Um, Sam, thanks. Uh, that just that gentle kind of exhale will help keep the cigar lit. You generally don't want to have to relight the cigar. Uh, so my buddy, the whole reason I did this video, I have a friend, Eric. He's a good friend of mine, um, and he was smoking one of his first cigars tonight, and he sent me a couple pictures and some videos. And he was telling me, he's like, well, I've got about half a cigar. It doesn't mean that... Uh, you can't do that, like stop smoking a cigar halfway through, but generally, once the cigar is kind of gone out and you have to relight, um, sometimes, not always, but sometimes you can lose some of the, uh, it loses momentum and it maybe doesn't taste quite as fresh. So if you can, you want to avoid relights. It's different than like pipe smoking. I try to smoke my pipe so that I don't have to relight either. I try to smoke it down and that's that's the fun of it for me. Um, maybe even more than the actual smoking. Uh, I'm kind of a process guy. I really enjoy the process of, of doing things and so whether that's um, barbecuing, which has been a hobby of, of mine the last several years. Um, if I barbecue, um, the fun part, of course, is eating the barbecue at the end of the day. But what really is um, where I find the most enriching aspects of it is getting up early, making the coffee, getting the grill set up, watching the sun. You know, the way the air kind of feels cool and moist in the morning. You're out there, you're getting your charcoal set up, you're getting it lit, you're getting the temperatures right. The smoke starts to roll. You put the meat on the grill. And then you, you sort of enjoy it. You enjoy the smell of it, the, the feel, the sound of, of the wood kind of crackling when you're barbecuing, right? And so all of that leads to the end result, which is tasty barbecue at the end of the day. Who doesn't love tasty barbecue, right? But for me, that's only part of it. It's uh, to be super cliche. It's the journey, right? It's not the destination. So uh, the cigar is like that in a way. Um, you know, the process, enjoying the smell, enjoying the sort of ritual, you know, I even have my jacket, right? I put my jacket on to come out and do this. And that's like part of the, part of the fun. Um, it sort of enriches the experience. So you can see, I haven't drawn on in a while, it's starting to go out. Let's see if I can, yep. If I exhale just a little bit. Hey Diaz, what's up, man? Good to see you. So if I exhale just a bit, I can now draw a little more heavily. Drake, Drake Melson, good to see you, man. We got KJ, Chris Church, Felicia. So you can see I got the cherry going. But it was pretty close to uh, it was pretty close to going out. So if I just just by gently exhaling, you're able to kind of keep that ember rolling. So, but yeah, I mean the the process of all of this is um, it's really what I find the most enjoyable, particularly the pipe smoking. So I'll, I'll maybe I'll do some more videos with the pipe smoking. But that's really there's an art form to it. Uh, it's very patient. It takes a lot of practice. Um, and I'll explain some of that in those other videos, but it's a very, it's a very like ritualistic type thing. Um, you know, you've got to tamp the ashes, uh, you've got to light it the right way, you've got to draw on it. So just like with this, I could smoke this like a chimney and just puff and puff and puff. I'd probably make myself sick doing that, um, so that wouldn't be fun. But it's all about sort of just enjoying, uh, taking the time to sit and just do this. It's something that obviously in today's time, um, we all have a lot of time on our hands, but 
in general, even before all this stuff happened, that was something that I really found to be appealing about um, about this was just sorry. I'm, I'm I get distracted. I'm reading the comments, but uh, taking the time to just sit and do nothing and just think it really allows you to ponder your day. Ponder uh, what's coming up for you next, reflect, um, and just take a moment to enjoy some of the finer things in life, even if that just means, you know, smoking a cigar in your garage, you know. So you can see as I gently draw, again, I'm just gently kind of rotating the cigar as I draw. It helps promote an even burn. Hopefully everybody's staying safe out there and enjoying their time at home and enjoying their time with their families. I really appreciate everybody checking in. I This is just something I decided to, to do because uh, I, I told you I had a buddy that was smoking one of his first cigars and I wanted to just give him some tips and some pointers to really enhance his his enjoyment of uh, you know his first couple sticks. So I figured I'd go live, and I'm really uh, pretty blown away with how many people are checking in. We got ja uh, we got Salzar, Jason, Shickle, what's up? Kyle, Corey, Corey, what's up, buddy? I appreciate. I'll take that as a compliment. This is the most Jeff Brooks thing I've ever watched. <laughs> I'll I'll take that as a good thing. But you know. Um, for those of us, unfortunately, we won't be able to be in Indianapolis. Uh, I see Wayne here. How far down do you smoke? Honestly, uh, Wayne, just until I, until I feel like stopping, you know, I'll smoke to the wrapper pretty much. If it's a good cigar, that's how I know it's a good cigar is when I get to the end and I'm like, just trying to get just a few more puffs. I'm like, I try, I make a little note and I say, okay, that was a cigar that I really enjoyed. And I'll get more of those. Sometimes I'll have a cigar and I get about a half, you know, I'll get down to where there's like a third left, you know, maybe to like to here or here. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm done. You know, I'm done. And you can, you can just be done, you know. Um, so it's kind of, kind of how you're feeling. There's no, there's, there's no set rule. I've seen guys smoke it all the way down to just a little, a little nub, you know. But it's really up to you. It's kind of whatever you're feeling. There's there's really no pressure. There's there's so much good tobacco to smoke in the world, just like beer. It's like if you don't want to finish your beer, man, you don't have you don't have to feel pressure to finish your beer or finish your cigar. It's like you just stop whenever you're ready. So But uh, unfortunately, with uh the cancellation of the DCI tour this summer, which uh massive disappointment for everybody. Um, I know I was really disappointed. Um, yeah, that one still, it gets me, man. I think about it uh, just as a judge. I mean, I think about uh, it's really upsetting. I can't even imagine for the membership losing a summer. I know the age outs get an extension, but uh, uh, really disappointing. But one of my favorite stops whenever, whenever I'm in Indy, if I have time, is uh, Nikki Blaine's. And uh, I know a lot of you guys watching out there have probably been to Nikki Blaine's. If you haven't, if you haven't, it's a really killer cigar bar in downtown Indy. Um, it's like the most masculine thing ever, and I mean that like in a in a good way. Like when we all like envision like for me. I mean, I'm sitting here wearing a smoking jacket, so of course I think it's cool. But you go downstairs, and they've got these like velvet curtains. You know, uh, it's like mahogany and leather-bound books, right, <laughs> from from Anchorman. But you know, you get, you go down. They've got leather sofas, cocktails. It's dimly lit, and you can smoke cigars. It's a cigar bar in downtown Indy, and it's killer. It's uh, 
If you're into it, if you're into cigars, if, even if you're just into getting a cocktail and enjoying that kind of relaxed environment, uh, and, and you're okay with the smell of the smoke, you gotta check it out. It's, it's, uh, it's, a, really, it's a cool spot. But uh, I was there with uh, work with the Old Guard Drumline, I don't know, four or five years ago maybe, and we, we had a great dinner at St. Elmo's, uh, shrimp cocktail, works, you know, and we decided to walk down to Nicky Blaine's and get uh, a cigar and uh, continue our, our evening, you know, uh, on the town. And uh, I remember sitting there. And this was some. This is always a motivation for me. Whatever, whatever it is I'm doing, whether it's drumming, or barbecue, anything, any hobby, anything that I'm doing, and I'm I'm not always great at this, but generally, if there's something I'm into and I want to learn how to do it, um, I don't like the feeling of of not knowing what I'm doing. And I remember vividly sitting in Nikki Blaine's. We were downstairs, and the the host came over. And, uh, you know, she asked us, like, well, what, you know, what would you like? Like, what kind of cigar do you want? And I just kind of picked one at random. And they came back. And they're, I remember they brought me my cigar and they were asking me, like, well, what kind of, what kind of cut do you want? You know, straight, V, punch. All, listing all these different types of cuts for the cigar. I didn't even know what the heck they were talking about. You know, as far as I knew, you just cut the end off. And, uh... You know, I smoked the cigar. I think I just said, you just, I think I told her, like, just whatever you think's best, house cut, right? And I remember sitting there, and I smoked the cigar, and it was, it was enjoyable, but I only smoked about half of it. I was probably smoking way too fast. I didn't know how to, I didn't know to char the end. I mean, I was making every rookie mistake, but you sort of, you know, you want to feel, uh, you know, you want to feel cool. You want to feel like you know what you're doing, right? So, um... That was sort of motivation for me just to learn uh, what I was doing. So since then, and I'm not an expert, guys. I mean, I'm. Um, these are just little tricks and little tips that I've learned over the years uh, smoking cigars. But uh, if you've got any input, share it. And I, uh, I'm always watching videos. There's a lot of great YouTube info out there, guys, that I watch and folks that uh, share their information and share their knowledge. So, But I... I'm always just trying to learn the better way to do it, um, and uh, I don't like that feeling of not really knowing what I'm doing, especially in an environment like that. You're with your buddies, and you just want to feel like you know the basics, you know? So, uh, you know, with cigars, it's like, man, there's there's a couple different kinds of cut. You got, like, straight cut. There's V cut, where it sort of cuts like a V into the end. And there's punch cut where it cuts like a little dot out of the punches like a dot, like a hole punch out of the end. It's a preference thing. It's not really that big of a deal. It's sort of up to you to kind of figure out what you like. I, just, I don't have any of the expensive cutters. I just use straight cutters. For me, that's worked fine so far. But that was kind of motivation for me to learn a little more about it. So I'm sure a lot of you guys have had similar experiences out there where you're doing something and, uh, you know, maybe you're uncomfortable. You're like, I don't know what the heck I'm doing here. I know I've had plenty of those, more than my fair share. And um, those are really learning, you know, learning opportunities for you. So you can, you know, identify what you don't know. And that's half the that's half the battle, right? Knowing what you don't know. So I'm gonna ask it again. So just to re, uh, if you're still hanging in there, you know, you just you just gently roll it around the edge of the ashtray. Hopefully you can see that. You get a nice that was better. You get a nice even break. You can keep smoking. Yeah, look how bright that cherry is there now. So, all 
Yeah, Abbott, man, it's exactly it, man. The more, the more you know, the more you find out how much you don't know. Yeah, Kevin, uh, you just got a personalized desktop humidor. Awesome. Yeah, I have a little desktop guy. It's a glass top. You know, it holds uh, maybe like two dozen cigars, maybe maybe 50. I don't know. I don't even know. I've got like two dozen in there. I could probably hold more. But um, if you haven't seasoned it, uh, if you've got a new humidor, uh, you just want to make sure that it's seasoned and you want to make sure that the hygrometer is calibrated. So I don't know about yours, but mine has a little like dial on the front of it, the little high ground. It's a, it measures humidity. It's called a hygrometer. Um, but it's on the front. And uh, yeah, Wayne, hey, th thanks for, for checking in. Um, but you just want to make sure it's calibrated. So I got my humidor and I did everything I was supposed to. I took uh, distilled water. And I seize, I just basically wipe the inside out. You just get the wood just a little bit moist. It's called seasoning. And that helps the wood kind of maintain that, uh, that moisture. And then you'll have like a little humidifier. It's usually like a plastic ring. It's got like a little bit of like sponge in there. And you fill it. I, I bought a bottle of like cigar humidor solution like on Amazon you can use distilled water but you just keep it moist uh, I keep mine set to 70 percent but generally anywhere between 68 and 72 um, is a good spot but the key is to make sure that it's it's calibrated uh, just YouTube or Google how to calibrate it I think you do something like you put water and salt inside of a plastic bag and then you leave the hygrometer inside the bag overnight and it will calibrate whatever it ends up at will be 70 like on the dot or maybe it's 75 75 on the dot there's science involved that's way over my head and then you can adjust you can calibrate you take the you know the face of the hygrometer and you adjust it to wherever it is based on that but you got to make sure that you keep the humidity in there uh consistent uh, Teddy, I see, uh, are you a smoke the same cigar kind of guy or try a new one? I try as many as I can. I have a couple that are like my favorites and I have a couple that are sort of just like, uh, I don't say cheapos, but I have a, maybe a half dozen, it's called Brick House. Uh, they pretty good cigar. They're about five bucks each. My favorite cigar so far is, Co uh, Cohiba Red Dot Robusto. Uh, you can get it in any size, but I prefer the Cohiba uh, Red Dot. It's not a cheap cigar. It's about 18 bucks a stick. Uh, cheaper if you buy in bulk, but that's one. Man, I, I've smoked some of those, and I smoke them down. to like I'm just like trying to get every little bit out of them. Um, yeah, Scott. I see uh, Scott Rogers. How you doing, buddy? Uh, yeah, the Boveda uh, humidifier packs. That's another way to go. If you don't want to fart around with a little... Uh, humidifier sponge in your humidor but they're a little expensive but they're super easy it's just like a little packet and you take them and put them inside your humidor and that'll you can buy like 68 69 70 whatever percentage you want to keep your humidor at you can uh but the key is you got to make sure that that really is important i know i had some cigars that i had bought for a new year's party and uh One of those things, uh, I had bought these cigars, and we, we didn't end up smoking that many of them. And so I had left them out. They were not inside my, for whatever reason, they just like sat out. And they were in bags, but they sat out of my humidor for like three weeks. And I went to smoke one one day, and I did, and it was awful. It was absolutely terrible. It was like, I'm sitting there going, man, this is awful. Well, it's because the tobacco had gotten too dry, so it's burning hot. And then when tobacco burns too hot, it tastes bad. It starts to taste uh, not good. And that's what I experienced. So, I, I that's again, I learned the lesson the hard way. Um, so, yeah, just uh, just make sure your calib The big thing, uh, Kevin, just make sure that the, the humidor is calibrated. Because sometimes those little, the hygrometers get tossed around and shipping and, they're not 
accurate when you pull them out of the box when you're first opening it up. So they make little digital hygrometers too that are fancy and I'm sure work great. I don't have one, but because uh, I I was trying to get my uh, humidor up to humidity for like two weeks. I was putting water in. I actually had like condensation on the inside of my humidor because I was like, man, why is this thing not getting up to like why is it not getting humid enough? Well, it turns out my hygrometer wasn't calibrated right. So it was like probably like 95% humidity. And I'm probably lucky I don't I didn't have mold growing on my cigars. But I figured it out. I fixed it. And ever since I, I did that calibration with the salt in the bag, it's worked like uh, clockwork. It just, it usually hovers right around 68 to 72, just depending on the weather and the temperature. So... So the goal is, uh, you know, eventually I'd like to have some artwork or something behind here that's not my just garage wall, but hey, one thing at a time, right? Anybody got any questions? Yeah. Man, thanks everybody for checking in. This is uh, awesome. It's good to, good to talk and not uh, feel quite so isolated. I wish I could have... Have you guys over? I have a parlor. I'll show you. But I have a. Uh, here's my. I don't know if you can see my motorcycle, but I've got. I've got four of these like club chairs out here. Uh, you know, and I have room out here for for four or more. I've got some folding chairs and stuff. But it's always good. It's such a. You know, so often smoking a cigar or smoking a pipe is such a social thing. There's really nothing quite like it uh you know maybe sitting over beers but there's something about pipes and cigars that they they sort of um they facilitate a certain speed of conversation that's contemplative it's patient it encourages listening right this is like i'm talking way more than i ever would normally i'd sit out here and i wouldn't say a freaking word you know i'm just gonna smoke my cigar but If you were sitting out here with some buddies, you bring up the topics of the day, and you just listen. You know, if if, if it's your turn to puff on your cigar, you got to be quiet. There's a there's a pipe quote that I like. Uh, a pipe gives a. Uh, uh, let's see what I can see if I can pull it out here. Uh, a pipe gives a wise man time to contemplate and a fool something to stick in his mouth. So, I don't know which one I am, probably a little bit of both at times. I know I've been a fool, and I've, I've been the wise man uh, a couple times anyway. But, you know, it facilitates that, that sort of flow of conversation, uh, and you're, you're not distracted by TV or phones, and you can just sit Enjoy the company, enjoy the conversation. I see Teddy asking about doing a group uh, cigar smoke. That's a good idea, Teddy. I may have to set that up. If, uh, if we can get enough folks signed up, man, I'll, I'll, I'll check it out. Uh, Corey, I see, uh, yeah, oh man, you got some good stuff stashed away. Yeah. Hey man, there's no time like the present to enjoy a, a puff, you know? That could be fun. Yeah, doing like a group uh, cigar hang or group pipe hang. So, yeah, I'm smoking a cigar tonight, but I, uh, I'll do another video. I've actually really gotten into the pipe smoking because it's it's actually a little bit... Pipe smoking's a lot milder than, than a cigar. A cigar is like... Uh, Maybe like scotch, you know, if I'm doing a comparison. Cigars like scotch, right? You're, you're not drinking, well, maybe you are, but you're not drinking it all the time. It's kind of like a special occasion. Uh, you know, um, 
with the pipes. There's all kinds of different flavors. I mean, it's like anything else. There's all kinds of different flavors and different types of tobacco, which I've really had a lot of fun uh, learning about those different things. But it's really the process that I find appealing. It takes the pipe smoking takes the most skill. So on the tier of tobacco, right, uh, a cigarette, and uh, there's no judgment from from me on if you if you enjoy cigarettes, hey man, that's that's whatever you know. That's how you roll. That's how you roll. Um. But cigarettes are, uh, uh, sorry, That's the cigarette thing is just something that um, as I've started to smoke cigars more and pipes more, you sort of learn that people can be uh, quick to judge maybe, but uh, I guess that applies to everything in life. Um, but there's no, to me, man, it's all just about enjoying the little things, so. Um, but cigarettes don't take any skill, right? So you could, you could take a cigarette and light it up and it's just going to burn down. You could light the end and without even drawing on it, it'll light and it will burn down. It's meant to be the like mass consumption of tobacco, right? And so it's in this little bleached paper wrapper and you can smoke it in the wind. You can smoke it pretty much whenever, but it doesn't really take any skill. Um, so it's like, that's like the base level. And then a cigar is like the next step where you definitely have to know some basics. You can smoke a cigar, um, without knowing all the complexities, but to really get the most out of it, you need to know where to cut. You need to know how to light it, you know, how to burn it evenly, how to puff so that you're comfortable You know, if you if you smoke it too fast, you can get sick. And uh, I've been there. If you've smoked a cigar at any point in your life, you've probably done that too. So, um, you know, it takes a little bit of, uh, but it takes skill. It takes practice. And the more that you do it, the better you get, the more that you enjoy the cigar. And then pipe smoking is like the pinnacle. It's really, uh, it's really, uh, sort of the top tier you know it takes a lot of there's a lot of nuance it's a very feel based thing where you've got to find your cadence you've got to draw at the right speed you've got to pack the tobacco into the bowl the right way um the right you know it's got to have the right draw and all all these factors really play a part so it makes it the the probably the least accessible of the tobacco world you know you can't it's tough whenever I have a buddy come over and they're like, hey, I want to smoke a pipe. And I'm like, let's do it. And so I, we kind of walk through the basics, but it's always tough because there's a learning curve. It takes practice. My first pipe was embarrassingly bad. I mean, like the worst. And that's where I, it was bad and I knew it was bad. I knew I sucked at it. So I found as many resources and uh, as I could on the internet and YouTube and I learned. So... That's really why I'm drawn to that because it, it, there's an art to it. And it's uh, if you smoke a bowl, if you get it just right where you've packed it right and it smokes all the way down, you get a real fine white ash at the bottom of your bowl, it's really rewarding. It's like playing a clean triplet roll. Um, it's like doing anything well. Nailing a, you know, when you shoot a basketball on it, nothing but net, you can, so, you can sort of still feel the ball in your hands when it's going through the net even though it's not in your hands anymore. It's kind of like that. It's like there's something sort of just magical about it if you get it right. But it's it can be tricky to do, and it definitely doesn't happen all the time. But it's the pursuit of that that's enjoyable. You're always trying to, to get it right. You're always trying to nail it. So uh, that's really what I found appealing. So you can see I got down here, and now this wrapper here, Man, it just it just slides right off. So I'll probably keep smoking this. Uh, my battery's getting ready to die, guys. But uh, 
I want to thank everybody for checking in. I'm going to enjoy the rest of this cigar here and my and some solitude. Grant, I see you checking in. We've got Stephanie, Jason, what's up, brother? Dan. Uh, man, Dan, I'm bummed about all these coaster delays uh, because we're quarantined, but it's good to see you. Grant, man, you've been, you've, uh, you've been posting some quality cigar photos lately, so I shout out a um, man that knows some fine cigars. So I'm going to sign off before my battery dies, but uh, take care, everybody, and we'll, we'll do this again soon.